listening to the incredible fusion soloing of the awesome Martin Miller. Martin's limitless vocabulary twists and turns so effortlessly that it's seemingly unhindered by practical concerns for either the left or the right hand. In fact, when it comes to technique, Martin is almost a lead-playing robot from the future, sent back in time to terrorize us with a thoroughly science-fictional array of picking weaponry. This is, of course, two-way pick slanting, probably the most common method of high-speed string switching, especially for scalar licks like this in the late 80s shred style. Here's the upward pick slant. And here's the downward pick slant. This tendency also pops up in Martin's high-speed pentatonic playing. There's the upward pick slant again. We can see the pick slanting to the right as Martin descends the pattern. Now, to be clear, this is not because of the direction the lick is moving. What determines the pick slant is the last note on the string. When the last note is an upstroke, like this, then we need downward pick slanting. And when the last note on the string is a downstroke, then we need upward pick slanting. If, instead, the picking were reversed to be downstroke, upstroke on each string, then you would have a descending lick with downward pick slanting. In other words, the pick would be slanted opposite to the direction the lick is moving. And these are just the rules of pick slanting, so that the pick gets from one string to another at high speed without hitting anything. Like most gifted players, Martin developed these mechanics entirely by feel without consciously being aware of doing so. No one taught you this movement. This is Nobody taught me. I just became aware of it when you started mentioning it well, right, a couple so. months back. At, at least the pick slanting thing. This is something yes. we see consistently among elite players, and it's always fascinating. But what's also cool about Martin is that he's now aware of his pick slanting mechanics and can actually explain them. Got it. And that's that's the two-way pick slanting pattern that we were, or that we is that two-way probably. Yeah. Yeah, two-way. So this is the, the the upward slant. Yeah. And here's the down. This is pretty rare, and it was cool to be able to have this kind of conversation with someone so skilled. But there are times when Martin can make pentatonic licks look quite a bit different. Cross picking. This distinctive curved picking motion is unmistakable. and it's a completely different approach to switching strings. In the cross-picking approach, the picking movement traces a semicircle that starts up here, swoops down, hits the string, and then swoops back up again to get out of the strings. So in cross-picking, the picking movement starts and ends above the strings on every single pick stroke. And this gives Martin the ability to do some pretty amazing things. John Petrucci's one note per string arpeggio picking sequence in the Dream Theater song, The Glass Prison, is an infamously daunting passage that involves playing Ingve style three string arpeggio shapes, but with alternate picking instead of sweeping. And the reason the ability to do this is so uncommon is because it requires cross-picking. Think about it. In the pick slanting approach, it's the last note on a string that determines the pick slant. Whenever that pick stroke changes, the pick slant also needs to change. For example, if you were going to switch from four notes per string to three, you'd need to reverse the pick slant. But in a one note per string sequence, that last note changes on every single string because there's only one note on each of them. So in theory, the pick slant would have to be constantly flipping back and forth. 
So is this what Martin is doing? Pick slanting back and forth all the time? Well, not exactly. Amazing. At high speed, Martin introduces a whole new mechanical ingredient, finger motion. The pick stroke starts up here and uses forearm rotation to swoop down toward the string. But then, as soon as we hit the string, the fingers take over and lift the pick back up in the air again. The upstroke is exactly the reverse. The fingers drop back down again, and then the wrist and forearm movements rewind the movement back to the beginning. Now this is really cool. And the distinctive look of it was immediately obvious upon sitting down with Martin in person. It is also pretty uncommon. You may remember that Steve Morse's technique is also a cross-picking approach. And indeed, Steve's vocabulary of innovative one-note per string sequences set the bar for this kind of playing in rock. But Steve's picking is entirely based in wrist movements. And you'll notice when slowed down that only his wrist is moving. There's virtually no forearm movement, and he's not using his fingers to lift the pick in and out of the strings the way that Martin does. In Martin's case, the formula for this finger motion is very specific. Most of the index finger bending comes from this joint here that's closest to the palm. While the other two joints only bend slightly to accommodate the palm joint. While this is happening, the thumb is mostly straight, mainly following along with the index finger's lead. In anatomy lingo, the palm bones are metacarpals, and the fingers are phalanges. So the finger-palm joint is known as the pronunciation-friendly metacarpophalangeal joint, or the MP joint for short. MP flexion and extension produces a distinctive parallelogram type shape like this. And it's the key to the way Martin gets the pick out of the strings on the downstroke. If we look at this from the top, we can see that the thumb is also moving side to side at the same time. It's flexing on the downstroke and extending on the upstroke. The whole system is super interesting, driven by a combination of this thumb flexion and extension and index finger flexion and extension at the MP joint, which is quite a handful. So how about, I don't know, Miller picking? Whatever you call it, when fired up to warp drive speeds, Martin's MP approach is just amazing to watch. Now it's not just that this is fast, it's the degree of accuracy and reliability of this movement at these speeds that's most impressive. The sheer lack of mistakes in the vast majority of the examples Martin played is a testament to the wide margin of error that his technique clearly has. To achieve this, the technique must be easy enough to do that small variations in consistency won't produce an actual wrong note. And this appears to be the case even for long passages. Actually, it's okay. I just need to practice it. <laughs> I can't do, I can't do it when I move across. I love how you say you can't do it and then you do it. That's my favorite. <laughs> it's not comfy. It's like <laughs> That's the wide margin of error. For Martin, the difference is that even when these intricate passages don't feel 100% comfortable, there's still enough leeway there that he can pull it off. In fact, it was only after two hours of this that Martin even commented on fatigue. And if you slow that one down a little bit more. Yeah, I think, like, give me a quick rest. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I nailed it better before, but I, I play too much one up for string stuff now. But you don't feel it at first, it builds up over no, time. No, no, it's just, just it's, it's normal. Yeah. And even then, he only needed a brief moment of downtime, well within the parameters of what you'd naturally encounter in a live playing situation, to snap back to being fully refreshed. Turn. Change your finger, hold too many notes once. The 
effortlessness of this technique means that it forms the core of Martin's overall picking movement. For example, take a look at this pentatonic lick. Given how fast this is, we would normally try and do this with pick slanting. And sure enough, Martin is using a very clear downward pick slant here. The upstroke lifts out of the strings, and then the downstroke attacks the next string on an angle. That's the way downward pick slanting works. This is a classic scenario, and it's exactly what we would see if someone like Eric Johnson were playing this lick, because Eric is a downward pick slanter. But if we look closely, we can see that this is not the only movement that's happening. Now, this is really interesting. The downstrokes are also lifting up out of the strings. So Martin's trademark MP extension is still happening, even at these elevated speeds. So even though we have a downward pick slant here, this is actually a cross-picking lick. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter, because the last note on every string in this lick is an upstroke. So you wouldn't need the downstrokes to lift out like this. Downward pick slanting by itself would be enough to allow us to play this lick at this kind of speed. Instead, what we're really learning here is that the MP extension movement is so fundamental to Martin's technique that it almost never completely shuts down. And because of this, there are lots of situations where Martin can get both pick slanting and his MP extension cross picking movements working together. Definitely a very, very big slant happening here. The five note shape is a two-way slant, so you're, you're changing the angle. Yeah, I'm definitely to... noticing how I slant okay. upwards. Here, Martin is using two-way pick slanting to provide even greater clearance for the inside string changes in the glass prison arpeggios as he moves from the B string down to the G string. But the MP extension is also still present, both here and on the transition back up to the higher string. This type of cooperation is powerfully flexible. Martin can activate more of the MP extension for one note per string playing baked right inside of scalar lead lines. We can switch over to pure pick slanting for more overtly shreddy play. For years, we thought this type of precision was achievable by only a small fraction of players with cyborg-like capabilities. And yes, Martin's computer-like accuracy on highly technical passages can seem inhumanly intimidating at first. But then you realize that what this all boils down to is just a movement, and one that we can now see clearly even on a phone. So what Martin is really doing is giving the rest of us a fighting chance of actually doing it. Far from being cybernetic assassins from the future, it's actually problem-solving machines like Martin to the rescue. <laughs>